questions to keep myself aligned. Waste away the hours doing what I should. Knowing that my soul tells me it's not for my own good. So this morning we're going to be talking about, I've mentioned it a few times, and we're going to be talking about prayer. Once again, not religious, okay? Um, not religious prayer. Um, I'm talking about just, we do it all day long. Like we do prayer all day long. Um well, maybe not all day long, but throughout the day because we're always wishing for things and wanting things. Hi, Jessica. We're always wishing for things and wanting things and um, trying to manifest things. And I wish this was this way and I hope that that's that way and I really want that to be that way. These are prayers. Okay, these are prayers. You're not sitting there with your hands clasped together, you know, on the floor with your hands on your bed and just kind of like, you know, it's not that kind of prayer, but it's, it's prayer, right? So even when we're asking for things, we are praying. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer today. And as I was doing, um, research for today's video, I just thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm just going to read some of the points um, in this book that I'm reading and I want to talk about those points. But right now there's this really great prayer that's from St. Francis of Assisi and that was in the 12th century. It was in the 12th century, but it's pretty good. It says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. O Divine Master, <clears throat> grant that I may not so much seek to be connected as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal light. So I thought that that was honestly a really great prayer. And as I said, this person was in the 12th century, St. Francis of Assisi. And like, as I read this, I was like, okay, this is kind of how I think. This is, this resonates with me. This feels good. This is, this is a great prayer. Right. So that's how I felt about this prayer. And the other thing that was really cool. Good morning, um, Elsa and oh, Patricia. The the other really cool thing that I felt about this prayer was that. This person who was in the 12th century has the same energy running through them as I have running through me. And when we think about things that way, it's kind of cool. Like the greatest minds in the world have the same energy running through them as you do. The most destructive minds in the world also have the same energy running through them as you do. So it's kind of a, it's just a real feeling of connectedness right? This connectedness. And that, that I, I thought, I thought was really cool. So it says, this was from St. Teresa of Avila, direct all your prayers to one thing only that is to conform your will directly to the divine will. So when we pray, when we pray, we kind of, we pray like there's something outside of us. Like, right, you know, when we pray, we pray like, you know, when we're asking for things, oh my God, I want this and oh my God, can I have that? And, and, and I really could use this and I wish people would stop hurting each other. And you, you know, you're kind of throwing things out there, right? So when we're saying all this stuff, right, when we're saying all this stuff, we're sitting there and we're praying to something that's outside of us or we're. You know, prayer, I know people kind of think of that word and they're like, oh, she's being all religious. I'm not, right? So it's like, 
I don't care what you call that higher power. I don't care if you call it God. I don't care if you call it source. I don't care if you call it universe. I don't care if you call it energy. I don't care if you call it raw. I don't care if you call it Aunt Betty. I don't care. That's not what I'm talking about here. I am talking about something that's been proven through quantum physics that we have the same energy running through us that is in the whole universe, right? This energy created everything and it is inside of us. And that to me blows my mind. Like every time I think about that, I'm like, so I had this energy that's inside of me, inside this body, in every cell of my being that created the universe. And that energy that created the universe knows everything. There's nothing that that energy doesn't know. Nothing. So if this energy is inside me, then I know everything. And I need to know how to access that information. And I do that through my, when I'm working with muscle testing. So it's really connecting to that inner force, right? So it's super cool. It's super cool. It's super empowering. And to know that if we could really step away from ego and really focus our attention and be connected, like feel connected, we're always connected, but always feel like, feel that connection and be part of that connection and be one rather than thinking that we're asking something outside of us, you know, that law of attraction that we're talking about, that field of attention, intention that we're talking about, that's inside us. We're not... We're not asking for something that's like way up outside of our solar system, okay? That's inside of us. We're walking around with that. So that to me is like we're almost praying within ourselves, really. We're not praying to something that's outside of us. We are praying to something that's already inside us. So that to me is mind-blowing, like when you can really just sort of think of the con like the what that means, right? What that means. So I feel like almost like like that's almost when I first thought of it, I thought of it kind of like overwhelming. Good morning, Ursula. Like that's like so weird, but bewildering weird. Like not not that's really freaked out weird. Like not that. It's like this like really. Like that is, to me, is like probably just understanding that was probably the biggest gift I've ever been given because that was like, holy shit, right? That's, that's, that's the feeling that I got when I actually, actually put those two pieces together in my head and I was like, holy crap, right? So that was kind of a cool thing. So prayer expresses a wish to be the vehicle for God's desires rather than a request for favors. Right. So when we ask for things, sorry, I have a bit of a cold. When we ask for things, it's about wanting to better. It's for the higher good for everybody. All right. So when we have to be careful how we ask as well, remember, we've talked about the law of attraction and how our words have power and what we say. That energy inside us does know everything, but it's not going to try and figure out our puzzles. Okay. It's not going to sit there and like, I know she said this, but uh, he probably means that. And that's not what's going to happen. Not going to happen. So just take that, that thought of that happening and just throw it out because that's never going to happen. What you say is what you get. What you say is what you get. So be very careful of that. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I get a lot of my, I'm going to call it inspiration. So in spirit, my in spirit my in spirit at like two and three in the morning I will like sit up and something I've been thinking about or words I've been trying to put together or a message or a better way to say something will jump into my mind and I've learned to put my voice memo my phone right next to me so that I can just pick it up and say it so that I can remember to put it into whatever piece of communication that I am putting out there and the one this morning was um, that I got up to was that because I've been you know I've been working on my website that's you know regarding how I work with people with symptoms of fibromyalgia so 
You know, I've been looking for different ways of saying things because I really, really like to be relatable. I don't want to get all scientific on people. So I like to try and be really relatable with the things that I say. So I've kind of put out there, you know, how is the best way for me to say this? Like, what are some really cool ways that I could put this out there that it's relatable? That's kind of what the thoughts that I had in my mind yesterday because I haven't really started all the videos on this and, and there's going to be. So I'm just starting to work through it and writing speeches for free seminars and just different things like that. So I was just like, okay, so let me just think about this for a minute. And one of the things that came up was law of attraction gone wild. And that's really when you think, of, and then the word container showed up and I was like, okay, all right, I've used the word container, but never the law of attraction gone wild. And I'm like thinking about this and I'm like, oh, of course, right? Because when you think about people who are suffering with whatever disorder or dis-ease that they are suffering with, including fibromyalgia, they are saying things, right? I am in pain. I am in discomfort. I can't move. I can't function. Nobody believes me. I have no credibility. Like all these types of things, um, you know, I'm always feeling down. Why do I feel like this? Why am I suffering? You know, I don't want to suffer anymore. So we say all of these things. But what we're really doing when you think about the law of attraction is that we are putting those things that we ask for, oh, we ask for into the container, right? So it is kind of like law of attraction gone wild because when some people are really not well, they're saying a lot of things to be understood. They have this need to be understood and I get it, right? And they have this need for someone to, I don't know what they're looking for, you know, maybe someone to hold them, someone to say, I get it, someone to save them, okay? And, and, and it makes sense, right? It makes sense. So, but when they're saying it, it makes sense on one level, but what they are doing on another level, what it is creating on another level is something completely different. Good morning, Lindsay. So completely different. So the more that they say these things, right? Hi, Karen. The more that they say these things, the more that they're filling their container, this container with those things. Remembering that energy does not know missing. It doesn't know scarcity. Whatever you ask for, it will give you an abundance of it. So when you say things like, I am in pain. Oh. Is that what you want? Well, here you go. It's almost like a backhanded joke, right? Like, why aren't you getting what I'm saying? But that's just how it works. That's just how it works. So when we can wrap our head around that, that is how it works. So if I say it, I'll get it. So if I say things like I am in so much pain, when you say that, I'm not saying that by the way, but when you say that, then energy that energy that's inside you that energy that is the whole universe will give will answer your prayer it will give you more of that so when you are suffering with something with the symptoms with so many symptoms like fibromyalgia has which is this multi-level um, disorder which most of them are but I can't help I mean I can but I'm not I, I you know I have to focus myself so I'm focusing on the symptoms of fibromyalgia so when I do that I look at all those symptoms and the people are repeating them. Remember I said I went into that group and I could only listen for five minutes, right? Because it was like, ugh, like so much pain, so much reporting of what they were feeling. And when we report, I want you to change it. I don't want you to think about it, that you're reporting it. I want you to think about that you're creating it. You're asking for it. So when you say, this and this and this and this is as what I'm feeling. You're actually asking for those things. It's a little bit messed up. I know. Like it feels like, what are you saying? And when you think about all the things that you've said in your life and you're like, I said that and then this happened and I did that, right? So when you think about that, it's kind of like, fuck, like what the hell, right? So it's like you have this moment of shit. Okay, so I can't change it. So I need to work with it. So I got to be really careful about what I say. All right, I have to be really careful what I say. So when people have disorders like fibromyalgia, where they're suffering from a lot of symptoms or chronic depression, or they can't sleep, okay, can't sleep. 
Let's work with can't sleep. I can't tell you how many times I hear this, right? So can't sleep. I can't sleep. Can't sleep. Oh my God, I can't sleep. I can never sleep. I can't get a good night's sleep. When people are telling me this, I'm like, you got to change what you're saying. But that's what's happening, they say. You have to change what you're saying. But I'm just telling you, no, stop saying it. So I'm having both sides of the conversation here, right? So like, they'll be like, but that's what's happening. Well, like, stop saying it. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Don't say that ever again. Right? Just say you sleep like the dead. That's what I say every night. I sleep like the dead. I can't hear a thing. And I do. In fact, except for these thoughts that jump in and I get up and I have to write them down. Other than that, I'm like, I'm out. Right? So you have to be very clear because energy, God, spirit, Aunt Betty, they're not going to figure this out for you. They're just going to give you what you ask for. So these people who have these chronic illnesses, it's like law of attraction gone wild. Because they keep saying this stuff. I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this. This is what I'm doing. This is what's happening. Oh my God, oh my God. They become their illness. And because they become their illness, they keep talking about it. And when they keep talking and reporting about it, it keeps happening and it happens worse. And that's why disorders like fibromyalgia or like cancer or like a lot of them just tend to get worse and worse and worse and worse because we keep stuffing the container with all this stuff that we're saying. I know this sounds opposite to probably anything that you've ever thought of before. And I keep driving this home to you guys, right? Because I'm like, you need to hear what I'm saying. Because what you are experiencing in your life is what you are praying for, asking for. Your words have power. We are praying every time we open our mouths. Okay? So, and reporting things about ourselves. Asking for things. So, you have to be very careful and vigilant in the things that you're saying. So there's this really cute saying in here that um, some teacher asked their student one day and said, I've always loved the story of the teacher who told a spiritually advanced young avatar joke. I'll give you an orange if you can tell me where God is. And the young person replied, I'll give you two oranges if you can tell me where God is not. Right? I thought that that was kind of clever and super cool. So you, when we pray to God or that higher power or whatever you want to call it, I'm not caught up in the name. It doesn't matter. Um, we have to think about that we are saying these things, asking these things, requesting these things of an internal power. Not, it's, we can't think of it as external. It's within us. It's everywhere. But we have to understand that it's right in there. We have to go somewhere. Like these people who say, you must go to church to pray. Why? I mean, I get it. That's a really great thing to do with a bunch of people and you get all that energy together and that's fantastic. But why do I have to? I don't have to. Okay, I can just do it sitting right here. Because that energy is in here. I don't have to take it anywhere to do it. <laughs> it's just right, it's right here. Okay. So you don't have to go somewhere. It doesn't have to be some elaborate ritual. Those things are wonderful to do and it does create community. That's great. Um, but that doesn't have to be how it's done. I speak to that energy. We all do all day long, all day long. Imagine that every word that you are saying is being heard. Every word that you say is being heard. Everything that you ask for is being answered. Everything you're creating in your life is because you asked for it. So if you could just think about that for a bit and just be like, okay, if that whack Aisha is actually right, then holy shit, right? You need to sort of go, okay, now I need to be careful. I need to think. 
be about my thoughts. I need to be conscious about what I say. And when we change the way that we think, everything around us changes. That's a fact. So when you can change the way that you think, everything around you will change. Okay? So keeping that in your mind, we're going to have some challenges for today. All right. So I want you to, I'm going to actually write out this prayer. I'm going to write out the prayer and set, and put it in there. And I'm going to say the prayer one more time because some of you guys joined late. So I'm going to say this prayer, which was from St. Francis Assisi that was written in the 12th century. And then I'm going to give you, you guys your challenge. So this is the first challenge, right? You don't have to use these exact words. I would. You don't have to use these exact words. But this is kind of like, to me, is dead on, right? Um, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let, there, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it, for it, it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born into the eternal light. So I love that. Like that's it's freaking awesome. Like that's, I love that. That's amazing. So I will put that up as a post. Okay. Um, so I would, you know, take that post and maybe say it every day to just remind us that, you know, it's in here and Maybe change the way that you are looking at things. Um, if you find yourself in a confrontation of any kind with anyone, be it a family member or a stranger, before reacting, ask yourself, is what I'm about to say motivated by my need to be right or my desire to be kind? Okay? So anytime you are having a confrontation with someone, Ask yourself before you say anything, is what I'm about to say is what's driving it because I have to be right or is it because I want to be kind? Okay, that might change what you say, right? And how you say it. You know, why am I about to say what I'm going to say? What is the end game about that? Because some of us like, especially when we're heated with things, we just want to be right. What do you win when you're right? Like, what does that win? Because I feel completely drained if I have those kinds of arguments with people. I feel like I'm exhausted. I don't feel like I won anything. So I don't know, you know, I don't really care if, if people think I'm right or not. Okay. Um, practice. Oh, sorry. So when you're about to say that, then when you say, oh, you know, this is because I think I want to be right, but I'm going to change it because I want to say something kind. It's going to change everything about that confrontation. Maybe it's not going to be a confrontation. It'll be a little bit different. Okay. Um, practice sending love wherever you previously radiated hate. There are people in our lives that are challenging and sometimes we just go, Argh! right? So send them love. Send them love and patience and kindness. Okay. Even when it's hard. Even when it's hard. That's when it's really needed. Okay. And... The last thing is where there is pain, practice pardon. So forgiveness, forgiving people. But number one, when you hold on to a grudge, when you're holding on to that stuff, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. Because that grudge, that negativity is what you've got in your own container. So you are hurting yourself. So there's no point. Just forgive. And whether that other person, you don't have to forgive to that person if you don't want to. Like if someone physically did something to you, you don't want to walk up to them and say, hey, I forgive you and want to come over for dinner. So that's that's like not what I'm talking about here. I'm just about like in your in yourself just to forgive them and let it go. 
right? And to really forgive them. And I do believe that people forgive in percentages. So if you can't forgive all at once, that's okay. Because I know like in people that have hurt me in my lifetime that I allowed to hurt me, I couldn't forgive them all at once. You know, I forgave them a little more every day, a little more every day until it was 100%. And whether they accept my forgiveness, whether I feel like it's accepted by them or not, that's irrelevant. That's their journey, not mine. Okay, my journey is to offer forgiveness and whether they accept it, even to the people that I say, physically say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that to you, right? Like I didn't mean that to come out that way and I'm sorry. And then they come back with some kind of backlash. That's their issue. I don't have to make them accept my apology. I just have to apologize. I just have to ask for forgiveness and know that I am forgiven. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they accept it or not. That is irrelevant and significant. If they do, that's wonderful. That's great for them. Very helpful for them. But if they don't, that's their journey. I'm not going to own that. I can't control it. Okay? So... Um, that's the stuff about prayer today. So remembering that pretty much everything you say, you're praying. Okay. So be careful about what you're saying. All right. And know that that energy is inside you. It's not something that's external from you and it's listening. It's listening. So be aware of what you're saying. Okay, before you turn into one of those law of attractions gone wild in a negative way and your container is full of things that are going to cause you illness. Okay, so that's it. That's what I got for you today. Have a great day and be kind and loving to yourself and to everybody else. Seriously, I know that sounds so like, la la la, but it's true. Okay, it's true. And I'm going to post that prayer because I think it's really good. I will talk to you later. Bye. Look at my reflection in the mirror I see That is not the person who lives inside of me Done with all the fear and doubts, the negativity I'm shedding all the crap right now, I'm stepping